All right, YouTube, I'm down here at Occupy Olympia. They've been given their eviction notice, and it looks like the majority of the camp is packing up. The food committee is packing up and encouraging everyone to take the bread and any other food they may need. Uh, some people are going to camp in the woods. A lot of these people are homeless and have no place else to go, so this is interesting. Two months uh, to the day that this protest started, uh, just a week before Christmas, the governor decided to kick these people out. Don't know what that message is. Let's see if anybody wants to interview. Reporter from the Olympian. Just go ahead and say who you are, what, what you want to say. You don't have any questions for me? No questions. This is a chance for you to talk about what's going on while you're here. And if you want to say something about what's going on today, that'd be great. Okay. I'm Bruce Wilkinson. This is uh, December 15th. This whoop, is whoop. the uh, day of whoop, the whoop. eviction. <laughs> the day that we were told that we had to leave this area. Uh, I knew this day was coming. It's the day after the end of the special legislative session, which is why we're getting evicted today. All the press has left town. Not a chance for any sort of interruptions of the Capitol. So I feel like that was the main reasons for this date. It happens to be two months. So the day after we started this Occupy here in Olympia, we started in Sylvester Park. And, uh, you know, it's been a long struggle. So I think the camp's changed a lot of people and the camp itself has changed. I think it's kind of time, time for, for this to happen. It was unsustainable. I think that, uh, that it's a shame but, uh, that people have nowhere to go. And so that's kind of troubling a lot of people is that there was no solution that was found. There's only eviction. And that's upset everybody across the board. Of course the people who who have been camping here who have nowhere else to go, it affects them the most. We're having a lot of people who want to leave but uh, don't have a place and um, this, what they had here they can't recreate for themselves anywhere else. And most people here who are homeless won't be able to carry out all the stuff that they have here. So they're not going to have, uh, you know, things like you know, multiple tarps to keep them um, the, from getting wet. They're not going to have pallets. All right, we're coming up on the occupation area. My plan was to take a nap last night and come down and check it out at midnight, but I fell asleep and didn't wake back up till 5 a.m. We're here the next day at about 10.30 and we're gonna check out what's going on. All right, I had an appointment downtown earlier and when I drove by here, there was a whole bunch of pedestrians standing between the police and the occupation. They already put up a chain link fence around the campsite and there appeared to be no one inside. I'm just simply trying to record how much money is being wasted on this effort. It uh, is epic. I saw police in riot gear as I drove by. Looks like they're breaking up now. Uh, just the cost of putting the fence around the village was epic. I mean, come on, folks. It looks like they have a tractor out there, too.
This is your taxpayers' dollars being wasted by bad judgment. Looks like they uh, occupied the parking lot. Or the police occupied the parking lot. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen vehicles. And there's a camera crew over there. How's it going? Want to say something about what's going on? What? Do I want to say something? Huh? I'm doing a YouTube video. Uh, want to say what's going on here? Well, the Olympia police are just trying to evict the people in the building. Oh, they're in the building? Yes. So some occupiers went inside the building? Yes. And they're not able to... The, the 13 police cars aren't able to do that? Uh, the state patrols on the other side of the building. Oh, huh. well thanks. And now they're pushing us off the street so we can't watch. Yeah, I was, had an appointment downtown and I drove by and the, the whole sidewalk was full of people. Yeah, and see they moved the tape. So they've closed off the sidewalk for health and safety reasons. Yes. Wow, kicked off the sidewalk. Downtown Baghdad. if they had a public relations person on site and they don't know. Not a very well organized police action here. It's like some Department of Corrections officers mixed in with Olympia Police Department and then some... I don't know who these guys are. And those guys aren't identified as being part of any police department. In fact, I don't see any police credentials on them at all. Brother, what is going on? Oh, let's see here. Can't see anything. No. Somebody said there's people inside occupying the building? Yeah. Occupying the building. building. Okay, better? <laughs> Is it better? Somebody answer me. This is definitely not the spot I want to be in. The police look apprehensive and bored. Alls we are saying <laughs> is give peace a chance.
Okay, I'm just gonna go to the other side of this building, then I'm gonna go head down and see how much money is being wasted on cleaning up the park. <laughs> There's somebody from the Olympia Police Department. I don't know who the shock troops are, they don't identify themselves. I wasn't aware that was legal in the United States. Assault rifle or something. Oh no, I'm inside the perimeter. Two, three, twelve, fifteen with normal handguns, and then this guy with the tear gas grenade launcher. Feels a little bit like I'm in another country today. Feels like Egypt. It is kind of amazing how much money is being spent to arrest a couple of people. Absolute fucking waste. I'm sure these people are getting paid overtime. Okay, they've closed off the sidewalk of the surrounding building. They s supposedly somebody's inside. We're gonna go see how much money's being wasted on the park. How you doing? And then they have a couple of uh, people outside of the perimeter. I'm not sure what their purpose is. I keep moving the crowd back, but I guess I just have so many police out here, they have to assign them someplace. Yeah. To justify the waste of money going on. You know, unsafe lane change or something like that. Well, and that guy's got a tear gas gun. He's out in the mixed population. It's not the strategic best strategic place to put him. Guess they're out on perimeter for a couple of blocks down. What police department are you from? Washington State Patrol. Oh, okay, thanks. That was easy. Now they rented this fence from a private company <laughs> and erected it around the park. There's nobody even at the park. They moved over to the building down there. And it's just a huge waste of taxpayers' dollars while they're cutting social services. Mm 
and you'll notice when I from my photos of when I was here yesterday it was not this big of a mess I'm not sure what happened I'm sure these guys aren't happy to have to clean it up I don't know what it be and they closed the road too talk about overreaction I mean, I really don't see the logic behind this fence. I see they have a whole bunch more police cars here. My gosh, there's got to be over a, close to a hundred police for an empty camp. Governor, you made a bad decision on your budget this year. Looks like they have an inner city transit bus waiting for hundreds of people to be arrested. Well, I'll ask these guys once again if they have an incident response person. Uh, no public relations officer once again, and I have to be on the other side of this barrier. It's a secure area. Lots of waste going on here. Government doesn't want to talk to me. Nothing unusual. Well, I don't know. I do know I don't appreciate my taxpayers' dollars going to 100 police officers standing around doing nothing all day long. Brother, what's going on? Not much. How you been? Good. Good to see you. Say a few words. Um, uh, let's see. We got out safely, we negotiated our way out. Um, I was in in the beginning uh, this morning and kind of got out early because I wasn't necessarily prepared, but you know, things kind of went okay anyway. Um, unnecessary amount of force, unnecessary amount of riot police. Um, the, these guys don't realize uh, they're wasting their time and, their, and our money. So that was the order. So there was eight people total? Um, how many people? About eight. About eight. And over a hundred police to arrest eight people? Yeah! I went down to the park, there's, there's well over a hundred police in oh, this yeah. area. What was there, like ten people in the park or something left? And they fenced Oh, I don't know, a fence around the park? That was incredible. That's yeah. a huge waste of money. And like I said, over 100 police to remove eight people. Well, what's funny about the fence is we can just pick that up and push them along. <laughs> they, I mean, they're giving us they're giving us ammo here. They keep giving us ammo every time they pull this shit. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't really know. What's going on? It's on by Triway. What's that? Is that what's going on with the fence? Anything? Pretty much it's done. Kind of, yeah, they, pretty much they put done. fencing. Did you see the fencing? I saw them. It's up to the Well, that's right. The this building is all like business stuff. Yeah. I forgot that. I wonder they would have the More. You're my girl. Too much information. <laughs> the building is vacant. Uh, when the state patrol came down this morning and obviously reclaimed the park, 
we started getting people that were uh, coming over from the park to the building, so we made a decision to uh, stop what was going on over here so we didn't get the Occupy in this place, just moving across the street. So uh, we negotiated with uh, some of the friends down here this morning to get them out of the building. That was the obvious goal. This is not an inhabitable building, and uh, there's some health and safety concerns in it. So we reached a uh, voluntary agreement that if they came out and uh, went home on their own, that we wouldn't make any arrests this morning. So right now we're just waiting to go in and do a sweep of the building, make sure we don't have anybody else left in there. But uh, obviously it was a win, win situation, I think, for both sides. Well, the fact that it did come up like the Yes, and I appreciate that. So what's the status now as far as, I mean, where are they going to go? You know, I don't know, and I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I understand a lot of their issues. I, I feel for them, but, uh, you know, this is not doing anything but taking up our resources. Was there any force needed at all? Uh, no. We have not used any force at all. Everybody's been very compliant. They have voluntarily moved, and we haven't had any issues at all this morning. Some of them might say this is an overreaction. Uh, way too many personnel here for what was going are you talking about the police? Yes. Well, yes. you know, I, I, I can't comment on uh, the state patrol's planning, but part of the problem you have is you don't know what you're going to get when you, you get into an operation like this, and it's kind of hard to plan. And if you don't plan ahead of time with the resources you need, when something goes wrong, then it, you know, you're in a waiting game trying to get people down here. So, um, you know, we always plan for the worst and hope for the best. Any of the best happened? I think today was, I think the outcome today was very good. I mean, having been involved in protests in the past and down at the court, I think this was, you know, and for us it was a, uh, it was a good resolution. Really? Uh, How's it going? We got the kids out, that's all I care about. I didn't want them sacrificing and getting felonies on their record over there. So <laughs> we got potential yeah. college, college professors in that group. Those are really the brightest kids in that group. Now I know why he's grabbing the camera, too. Because he always out of his Look at this he's a guy. You guys are all just like walking out and then grabbing the camera. Mary was walking some guy by the phone. Not one cop even asked about what they were doing. Not one fucking cop stopped him. They came over here with like more than 100 people. And, start, and, and kids were just walking back and forth by themselves, dragging pallets, carrying shit, doing all that stuff. Yeah, I think that's good. Are you taping? Yeah. Although I probably won't have what he said. Well, I'm thinking we're about done here. There hasn't been anything going on for hours. I'm going to head back to the car. And oh yeah, by the way, they erected this uh, tape barrier after they had removed the protesters from the building. Protesters have been gone for hours. Yet, management decides to keep the troops in. That, that building needs to be defended from nobody at all. Yeah, it does take three workers to uh, inspect a hole. This is like the epitome of government waste happening today. They've got people out in the streets. You're part of it! So what? They were talking on the phone with them. They were negotiating. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. These guys are all of a sudden coming over here.
Oh look. Three hours after they were evicted, they're going into the building. Now they're going to arrest them if they don't come out now. They're not sure anybody's in there. That's what they're saying. Now they're entering the building. The humanity. Oh, this guy pulled in the wrong spot. I spotted someone from the sheriff's department that I knew and he talked to me. Basically OPD is in charge of this command scene and they're the ones making the decisions. The Thurston County Sheriff's Department is just down here to show support and they are doing first priority responses inside the city of Olympia. Um, there's probably over a hundred Washington State patrolmen and 50 of them in riot gear spread out between one side of the park over here all the way through town and down there and I'm gonna go back because that was way too fast. Oh look we have some lay down protesters. <coughs> that are not in the street. So we have police from here. About 30 of them on that street. And there's groups of two on every corner of every block for several blocks down. And there's uh, several hundred or several squads over on the other side of the park doing nothing. Where I got kicked out of earlier. Oh, and here comes the SWAT squad. And after OPD went into the building, Thurston County Sheriff's Squat Swad showed up. And they are hanging out in the parking lot. Alright, one of the uh, results of cordoning off the sidewalk, even though there's nobody in the sidewalk walking across it or anything else, has caused all the cars to basically stop as they come by, which has caused cars for traffic to back up. Protesters aren't even doing anything. It's just the police cordon. Mm -hmm. All right, seems like a day of videotaping government waste. Oh, that's not my beer bottle, so I don't know who broke that. This ditch goes out this way right supposedly for water coming across here my grandfather donated this piece of property here out to here so this road could be made and there has never once been any water coming from over here under here and across to there it just doesn't happen yet the government sent out a crew to dig out that ditch put some straw down paint these signs that are completely worthless and it's just incredible how much money can be wasted. This comes out of our gas tax dollars, because it's roads, on stuff that doesn't even need to be done. What's going to happen is all the water from our driveway is going to come down here, and it's going to go over there into that, that ditch. It's going to fill up this guy's yard when it floods, and it's going to go across the road. We shouldn't even have water coming down this way. It should go across there where it can drain. But the county took the ditch from across the road out. So... Once again, we got a big ditch for absolutely no water that will be going through it. But there's water backed up into it. Mm. 